Welcome to Between the Cracks, the podcast where we do tea reviews, comparisons, and just casual conversations around tea. My name is Dart, and I'm your host, and I'm joined today by Griffin. Hey, how's it going? My name is Griffin, and I'm here to try some tea, see if I can guess which one of these are the most expensive. Yeah, is so that we what have, we're doing here? Yep, so we have a $50 pot, a $200 pot, and a thousand dollar pot and Griffin's gonna guess which one is which. I think I'm gonna get it on the first try. We'll you think see. so? I think so. Okay. Let's try it. Alright, alright. I'm gonna drink some tea. Pick up the first one, let me know what you think. So just visually mm -hmm. inspect them and see yeah, what Yeah, just I hold think. it. We'll, we'll do some pour tests later um, so you can actually pour with them and see which one you feel like you know pour is nicer but... Okay, alright. I like the coating on this one. Okay. It looks like it's almost well, I don't know what kind of material it would be, but it's not definitely not a paint. It's a lot thicker than a paint would be. Okay. Hmm. Wait a minute. I'm wondering if this has any any kind of play into it, the stamps that are on the bottom, to the, the price of it. Yep, the stamps definitely do. Now on cheaper pots, a lot of times, you'll see everyone stamping. Just because it has a stamp isn't necessarily indicative that it is a price point, right. but it, it there is a relation between the stamp and, and the price for sure. Okay, all right. Well, with that bit of information you just gave me, this one that we just poured out of does not have a stamp, and you just said that some of the cheaper ones may not have a stamp. So do you think that's the do you I'm, I'm going to guess pot? the first one we just poured out of is the cheaper, is the $50 pot. Okay, okay. Let me get out some water here, because I don't want to pour with the hot water, just so we can do a couple pass-throughs. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll let you pour out of each of these, and let me know if you feel like anything is different or if you feel like you still think that one's the cheapest or where you where you kind of sit. What do you think about most expensive? Which one do you think is most expensive kind of just right off the cuff here? I think the center one is the most expensive. Okay. Just the, the way it feels in my hand and the, the shape and the quality of it. Okay. I think that one's the most expensive. Okay. So you think this one's the most expensive and you think this one's the cheapest it's right It's the now. cheapest, yeah. Okay. And I think this one to the far left is the middle ground. The middle one. Okay. I'll give you a little more context and see if like anything changes while you're pouring and then while I'm telling you these other things too. So one thing to kind of look for, um, the cheapest pot, anything under like $100 is probably going to be a mold made teapot. Okay. So basically what that is, is there'll be like a preset mold and they shoot the clay, but it'll be diluted clay because if you used like pure clay, it would be too thick to right. squirt into the mold. Um, so there's typically ways you can tell when you're looking at the pot if it was made with a mold. And one of these, the $50 pot is made with a mold. So I'll let you do the pour test first and see when you're pouring if you think anything changes. Okay, from the pour test? After the pour test. So, so yeah, test. so go ahead, okay. go ahead and give me each a pour. All right, let's see. And make sure you put your yeah put your finger on top. It won't burn you, but the lid might fall off if you uh, don't put your finger on top of it. So what exactly am I looking for when it comes to a pour test? How smooth is it? How easily does it does it kind of come out? Yeah, stopping and starting is a good way. If it spills over, that's that that can be an indication too. Okay. Hmm. This one definitely didn't spill over like the first one did. Yeah. One thing I will say for this one, there is tea in it, mm -hmm. so I think it is going to be blocking the filter. You're not getting a straight shot. But, okay. So just just keep that in mind. It is a little bit different when you're pouring with that one. All right. I still think that one's the cheaper one. Okay. All right. You saying that that one's the cheapest? The middle yeah. one's the most expensive? Yeah. I'm I'm gonna stick with my initial. Okay. Thought on them. Well, I'm gonna tell you, you're not right about something. Okay. I'm not I'm not gonna tell okay. you I'm not gonna tell you what you're okay. not right about. <laughs> but you, so you guess the middle one's the most expensive, and you guess that the one on the left or the one on the right left um, was the cheapest. So take a look and see if you can tell which one of these was made from a mold. Okay. I'm not gonna be. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to figure that one out. They all look like seamless to me. Well, this one's coated, so I guess it's a little bit harder to figure that out. Is that stamped on the inside? Yeah. So typically, the the kind of classic like stamping is. Mm -hmm. You do one on the lid, one on the bottom of the handle, one on the inside, and one on the base. Basically, just to show that like each piece was was crafted like by by hand. Like, have you ever thrown pottery before? I have not. Okay, so when you're throwing pottery like on a wheel, you start with you know a ball, a clump of clay, right? And and you pull it, and you shape it, and you round it. But but it's the force that's doing it. You just kind of make subtle motions, right, to right. to bring the pot up and shape it. Well, in Yixing, what they do is they they compound this clay. They slap it like with a with a wooden bat, mm -hmm. right? And then they build everything by slabs. So this this is an Yixing pot. 
So this one, they took like an actual slab mm -hmm. and they, they made the slab and then they take a little bit of um, slip or clay and they join it along the edge to get rid of that seam. Right. Okay. Um, but that's basically the reason like for the stamping is if it wasn't made with a slab, it'd be very hard to stamp the inside in, in the right like gotcha. in the right place. Whereas if it's a single piece, it's really easy to stamp and then, right. and then put it together after. Okay, I'm learning a lot here. For the guess on the mold made. So I just said that this is handmade, yeah. right? And so it does have, it would have a seam Right, if they didn't smooth it over. If so we yeah. can get rid of seams, right? It's okay. not it's not like off the table to get rid of a seam. And the other thing that you can look at, and this is a telltale of like one of your like cheapest pots, is going to be on the handles if there's a flat line. I'm gonna tell you why. Okay. So if there's a flat line, basically what it is, is it was made in a mold with each half of the teapot, and so there's a seam around the outside where those two molds came together. Right, yeah. And so they sense. flatten it along the handle. Mm -hmm. Like along the top of the handle? Mm -hmm. see, if, see if you can tell what I'm talking about. Okay, let's see here. Because one of these does have that feature too. That wasn't just a, just a random, random tidbit. Okay, this one looks like it's got the flattened. On the uh, on the handle itself. Okay, but that kind of throws me off because this one also is stamped on the inside. So wouldn't that be harder to stamp on the inside with a with a mold? I'm getting thrown around now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. Yeah, so this is where you're getting into kind of the intricacies of it. So there's there's kind of like layers in what to look for, like in what order. Mm -hmm. um, so the stamping is kind of a misnomer. It doesn't really mean anything now. Like I wouldn't okay. ever like say this is a quality pot just because it has a stamp. Mm -hmm. If you know the stamp of the artist, that could give you some indication. Okay. But these are all in Chinese characters. Right. Right. Like, what are the chances you're <laughs> going to be able to tell? The other thing is, this pot was made by an American. Okay. Not made by a Chinese potter. Right. So they're not going to have any stamp. It's not really like a good indicator of, of the quality. The, the build and feel is going to be better. So Another thing we can do is take these pots and see where they where they kind of stop. See how this like the lid doesn't fall off. Right. You kind of want to do it gently and like let it let it go. But see how like the natural falling point isn't over ninety degrees. Right. Some pots. See that one. That oh, one's the like, furthest. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And again, that that's not like a end all be all. Like that's the one answer. But like these these factors we're looking at together will kind of combine to tell you. Well, with that being said, I'm I, I'm still sticking with the center one is the most expensive. Okay, so the, but center, the center one's the thousand dollar Yes, but I'm gonna swap the left and the right of the cheapest and the mid grade. I'm curious, originally, what made you think this was the low grade and what made you change it? Like, what, what, what were you thinking when we started and what, like, what were you thinking now that, that changed it? I think initially for the low and mid grade, mm -hmm. the fact that this one is coated made me feel like, okay, this one, they probably put a little bit more work into it put a sealant on it for the clay or whatever that may look like. Yeah. And then this one isn't. And I don't know if using the term raw is correct. I mean, I'm sure it's cured, but it's not coated. It's not painted. So I was like, okay, maybe that one's a little bit cheaper. They didn't use as much material. Yeah. You're right and wrong. Okay. So, <laughs> so this is coated. Um, but when it's when it's coated, that's actually not a good thing normally. So one okay. of the nice things about like teapots specifically is when they're unglazed, they're semi-porous. So yeah. when you're talking about ceramics, you have earthenware, stoneware, and porcelain, right? So earthenware is completely porous. Think of like a planter's pot. Like you go to Lowe's, you get a planter's pot. If you pour water, it will just seep out the bottom, right? right? Pretty much all um, teapots are fired in a stoneware temperature range, and so they're going to be semi-porous. Mm -hmm. That porousness affects the flavors of the teas. Remember when we had that really bitter tea? Yeah. And it yeah. wasn't the one, it didn't taste as bitter? Right. That was because that pot was porous because it was stoneware. If you see one that's glazed or looks like it's colored, that's actually a good indicator that it's a lower quality, not a higher quality. Gotcha, because all the porous is sealed away and it's not going to be able to... Exactly. If you're... <clears throat> when you showed me the fermented tea, it's not going to be able to work with fermented tea very right. well is that right right right, right. yeah okay. yeah it's not going to change anything about it um it doesn't necessarily make it a bad pot but typically these guys um on the shelf right here in the middle all these guy wands the ones that look like cups with just lids on them yeah those you'll see coated a lot more those you'll see glazed and that's typically what you're going to see is a glaze um this 
if you ever see like a color that's really vibrant, mm -hmm. does that look like, does that look like this? Like, is it glass like? Does it look like it's kind of finished like, like this or like this? Or does it, do you think it looks different? It definitely looks different. It looks more matte than, than gloss to me. Yeah, exactly. So that's, that's where they use a, uh, a slip, which is just basically clay uh, diluted with water and then mixed with a colorant. So yeah. this is actually, so it's a clay pot and it's coated with a clay mixture or sort of. Right, right, right. Okay. right. Like a thinner, a thinner clay mixture to, right, to right, give, okay. it, give it that color. And I forgot, what did you say? Why did you say, oh, this one because it was uncoated originally? Yeah, originally for the cheaper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So another interesting thing. So this is electric fired, this is electric fired, and this is wood fired. Okay. So basically, there's two ways that you can fire any type of ceramics. One, one way is in oxidation, mm -hmm. one way is in reduction. So in oxidation, it's going to be a very consistent um, firing. So if you're doing a lot of pottery, you're more likely to do it in an electric kiln because you're more likely to have a consistent result. Right, right. Wood even fired. Heat all the way even. around, all that stuff. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So when you're firing in, in a wood fire kiln like this one was, you're firing in reduction. One of the byproducts of firing in reduction is you're, you're firing to a higher temperature. Mm -hmm. And so when you wood fire, you actually seal the clay away. So you're okay. creating a less porous clay body mm -hmm. when you do that. So if this was fired, let's say, in oxidation, it would affect the tea more. Right. right? Okay. Like this one is going to affect the tea the most because there's no, there's no slip. There's nothing else on it. There's no colorants. There's no, this is just raw clay. Okay. Right. If this was wood fired, like this one, then it would be less porous and it would affect the tea less. But then you'd get, you know, kind of a cool, like, burnished design right, like, on right. the side. Well, I'm still sticking with what I just with the change that I made okay cheapest mm -hmm. most expensive mm -hmm. and mid-range okay cool I'm sticking with that all right so you're right on you're, you're that's 100% accurate yeah. okay so this this is the $50 pot this is the and I did say 200 I would say 200 to 400 is kind of the range for like a a craft potter who isn't a master okay and so that's what's interesting about this one is you were able to pick this one out, but like some of the pots, like we don't sell any master pots because if I were to get a master pot from China, it would be like $500 or sorry, $5,000 for me. So it's just not really reasonable at this mm. point for us to sell that. And, and there's such a small like percent of people that would want that. Right. That like, it's amazing that we have this pot and it's a really cool demonstration piece. I honestly don't use it that much. The shape isn't my favorite, but you could tell though. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I, once I started messing with it and some of the information you were giving me, I was able to make that distinction, at least for the most expensive, yeah. not for the other two. The other two was right. a lot harder until you started talking about it. I was like, okay, all right, I'm starting to figure it out. Yeah. Now, for like a Western audience out here, mm -hmm. would this be, is this more of like a novelty thing for some people or do, or do you have like a lot of customers that actually come in here like, hey, I want one that can pour well, can do this well, can work with this kind of tea and stuff like that? Yeah, so that's something that I honestly don't really like when people do, like when they say like, hey, this, like, there's, you know, you could say, for example, like bald teas, you want a wider teapot, right? Because mm -hmm. they're going to open up. So you want like a lower, flatter, you know, wider pot for that. To me, if you're a collector, sure. But like, if you're just using this, like, let's say, you know, you want to drink tea and you want to have the effects of like the clay mm -hmm. and you want to enjoy that and have a nice pot, mm -hmm. I think you should just get the pot that you like the most. Yeah. Because... Another thing you can do is season your pot where you brew the same type of tea in it over and over and over, right? Just like okay. cast iron, right? Same exact thing, except some people do just one type of tea in it. Mm -hmm. Well, what if I want to drink another type of tea? You're not going to drink from your favorite, you know, teapot just because like you may affect the seasoning. So right. like, okay. if you're down the line, you're like, oh, I have three pots, I have five pots, I have 10 pots. Sure. Start to season your pot. If you have one, just get a pot that you really like yeah. and like I would say stay away from like green teas. If you brew a green tea like at 100 degrees Celsius like boiling, you're going to kill a lot of those flavors. And okay. this this will we're not brewing enough that it like it'll really affect it, but I mean you can still feel this like it's still warm, right? Oh yeah, definitely. And and this one's less porous than this one. So Yixing pots are typically more porous and so like this one like you couldn't touch this for 5 minutes after we brewed with it. Like oh, it was wow. I mean you couldn't like hold your hand on it. I mean you could yeah, touch yeah. it, right? I mean it's up to the user. But for me, get a pot you like, and okay. then when you when you like get to the point where you're like, okay, I've you know I have a billion tea cakes, I have all this tea, and I want to like I found a tea that I really like because mm -hmm. that's another thing. Like, let's say you're just starting drinking tea, you don't know what tea you like. 
Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, like, I mean, we sat down and did, how do you feel about this tea, by the way? This one's good. You said this was the, this is another white tea. This another is the, white yeah, tea. The yeah, Bimudan. Yeah. yeah. The white peony. Yeah. Cause I tried one while we were at coffee fest and that white tea was good. The fermented tea was interesting being able to see and take or see being able to taste that distinction. Yeah. I didn't think I was going to be able to. And then you're like, no, 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 here it goes. Yeah. And it was really bitter from a glazed and then from a porous, it was smoothed out. And I was like, okay. Yeah. Like I didn't expect to taste that. Right. But I did like the white tea. Yeah. And then do you like that? You like this white tea? I as like well? this white tea as well. Yeah. Can you, I mean, it was, it was probably a couple of months ago that we were at the coffee fest. Can you, do you remember the difference in taste between this and that one or no? Is it too? No, I'm not going to be yeah. able to. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. could you tell that this is similar to that? Like, could a you tell bit, that this yeah. is a white tea? Yeah. Yeah. yeah actually okay. a little bit. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's, that's one of those things like this is, this is a different grade completely. Um, it's been aged for four years. So that's going to change the flavor of it. So like there, there's so much nuance and like things to learn that. I just feel like it really doesn't make sense to like dedicate a pot to a tea. To a tea. Like yeah, when you're okay. starting. Like it just I don't know. It, it feels like it feels like overkill and will get you brewing tea less, not more. Gotcha. Right? Okay. Like um Yeah. Did you notice or feel anything from the pour test? Kind of. The most expensive one definitely did not uh like dribble out the bottom mm -hmm. nearly at all. But mm -hmm. the other two did. However, I couldn't distinct make that distinction between the two other ones mm -hmm. just by off that fact because this one dribbled out a little bit worse. I felt like mm -hmm. now that could have been because of the tea that was in it mm -hmm. that was affecting the pour that you, yeah. that you had just told me. So maybe that was why. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, like dribbling out of the bottom more so than the cheaper one. Yeah. So it, like I said, it could be the tea. Like, and I think like pouring is one of those things that like, cause you ask like, do people look for a specific pour? Like look for, I think that's one of those things that people really look for is that like really pretty pour. Okay. Yeah. 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 The only thing with that though, is in order to get like a consistent, I call it like a glass rod pour where, yeah. I mean, you can just like, whoosh, you know, bring it up and it just pours really nicely. Mm -hmm. The, the, there has to be a bottleneck in the spout. Mm -hmm. Whereas like another one of the pots, um, I'll grab it in a second. Another one of the pots I have up here, there's, there's a really big, like, it looks like a water droplet and there's kind of like a pouch where okay. the spout is. And so what that does is it creates the bottleneck at the tip, but you still have room to control how fast it pours. So like if you have a pot that pours like a glass rod, you're not going to have any like ability to control the speed of the pour. Okay. And with like a mold made pot, it's really easy to just have a really like nice cylinder mm -hmm. where it kind of, it looks good. Whereas like a younger or newer potter may have a pot that pours less well than okay. than a mold made pot right like you had a harder time distinguishing these and and this this is a very nice teapot like this is a, like i mean cooper makes amazing work right so like it's it's kind of hard to chase after if you're looking at that spout like the difference from mold made um and and handmade in that but let me grab that okay. other pot yeah 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 so this is another oh, wow. american potter yeah that's wild looking isn't that oh, cool i see what you're talking about right there yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so it has this big opening so you can control yeah. that speed and it's definitely not coated. This this feels like it has no coating on it at yeah. all. So it's like all porous. Is, so does yeah. he uh, um, oxidation? Is that right? No, uh, it is right, but he actually reduces his. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this clay actually doesn't <clears throat> hold up. Like so, um, you can fire clays to uh, vitrification or maturity. So porcelain, like getting that glass like look, that's vitrification. So when okay. it looks like glass like, but. You can't fire Lysella clay, which is this clay, um, to maturity in oxidation. Like the clay just starts to degrade and break down. So wow, when okay. you're reducing it, um, basically you're you're not hitting it. Think of it as like you're not hitting it with as, as much temperature at the same time. It's more temperature over time. Like dehydration. Is it? Basically, okay. yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. yeah. Dehydration is yeah. That's not a bad way to bad way to think about it. Um, so yeah. So no, this this is in reduction, which is why we get. I mean, you can kind of see this that iridescence. Yeah. Right. Like that, that color that's, that's from the reduction. So this is gas fired. So it's not wood fired, but it is still fired. We'd say environmentally it's environmentally right. fired as opposed to electrically fired. Okay. Yeah. So here I'll show you the, uh, kind of what I mean by that, that speed of the pour. So you can pour it like that. Right. Okay. Yeah. And it still pours or you can, you, it's kind of, it's got that like variable. It's got a grade to it, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Whereas like these, there's kind of, you know, there's like an ideal and a less ideal. There's not really like multiple points you can pour. That's cool, man. That, that's cool. Yeah, that's yeah. interesting. Now, what's the point of using a pour cup? That's the take away. Let me guess. So that that's the take away 
I'm trying to go off of what, what I was learning from you at Coffee Fest. Yeah. That's to take away from, or not take away, that's to stop the brewing at a specific time. And then that way you can sit and enjoy it. That way you're not having to, having to just chug your cup mm -hmm. and keep pouring from the pot. Yeah, so the main thing was that first thing that you said where you're, you're stopping the steep at a certain time. Steep, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So because there's, there's a lot of leaves in here and because there's a little bit of water, right? if you were to leave it in there, you can oversteep it. So when you put it in the pour cup, then you can leave it and I can kind of have this ready and prime. Like you still have some in there. So yeah. if I filled it, this pot also, I don't know if you noticed on our first steep, I noticed that this pot uh, is slightly bigger than both of these two cups pour out. Mm -hmm. So another thing is like, I would have to leave tea sitting in this pot right. if I didn't grab the pour cup, which is why I grabbed the pour cup pretty early in the session. Um, because, you know, if either of us have any in there, then I basically can't move on to the next right. steep and, and get okay. it ready. So yeah. So it's definitely about kind of like priming to make sure you have tea ready and then and then just like making sure that you don't oversteep, oversteep um, yeah. the leaves. Because if you just leave it in there, you're not going to want to drink it. And then you've kind of taken away from like future tea future, future tea, sessions yeah, yeah. yeah okay yeah. so okay i got a question for this one yeah, yeah when it comes to uh the steeping mm -hmm. which one of these if any if you oversteep affects the tea the most so among these probably this one mm -hmm. uh, just because of the fact that it is not porous and to be fair i did just get this yesterday but just speaking from the experience of like the wood fired reducing that porosity yeah um think of like your your porous your porousness is is always going to round it out so the most porous pot is going to make for you being able to kind of make the most mistake or error or just, just forgetting about, right? Like right. the more porous it is, the more it's going to mild it out. The less porous it is, the more it's going to it's gonna bite you for, for doing for it. For oversteeping? Yeah, for oversteeping. Yeah. So oversteeping makes tea more bitter? Is that what you're saying? Uh, yeah, I would say in, in most cases, like a white tea, you're probably not going to ever get to a point where it gets bitter just mm -hmm. because it's a more mild tea comparatively. Um, but like that puar that we tried, the fermented tea that we tried at the coffee fest, that would be one that would, that would really oversteep. Right. Um, but like in addition to that bitterness, you get taken away from future sessions, which is kind of what you get with a white tea. Like, right. let's say we, we could brew this for, you know, eight, 10 steeps. If you're over brewing every time. You're only gonna get three or four. Yeah, of the leaves that are in the pot. Of the leaves that are in the pot. Yeah, of course you can add more leaves. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but you're not really, and uh, some people will call it like death brewing, where you just like leave it in, mm -hmm. just to see like get the most out of it. Um, a lot of times I won't death brew like when I'm tasting tea. Sometimes people will do that when they're trying a tea for the first time, and I'm I'm not a tea vendor, right? I'm a teaware vendor, so like right. I don't I'm not that particular of like some people will eat the leaves. Or like death brew when they first get a tea because it all tells you about the character of the tea. Okay. Um, but I think for somebody just drinking tea, you can just death brew at the end, like when when basically the tea's dead. You're like, okay, that last one lost a good bit of flavor. Yeah. Let's just death brew it, and then we'll just use that as the last steep, and then we know it's going to get pitched, so you don't care that you're oversteeping that last. Right. One. Right. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Any more questions on these guys? I don't think so. That's that's been pretty interesting. I didn't know that they have a distinction that's easily. I, I guess now that I know, easily, <laughs> yeah. easily uh, seen being that you know they're flattening the um, mold seam, mm -hmm. and you can see it. The, the, the handle of this is actually flat. It's flat on the inside and on the outside. You right. can feel it. Yep. Whereas the other ones are essentially perfectly round. Right. I didn't know that, and like what was throwing me off initially were the stamps, and I'm just like, okay, how do you stamp this? And it's, you know, a two part mold. Yeah. And like I was like, I, I, I'm not seeing any stamps on the yeah, on yeah. the American made one, so yeah. I'm gonna be like, okay, that one's got to be the cheaper one. It's got to be molded. I don't, you know. I was I was impressed, like, and I don't know, maybe we do this again with different pots or whatnot, but I yeah. was very impressed that like you immediately, like I feel like before anything, you realized which one was the master pot. I got lucky. I'm going to say I'm gonna, you think so? okay, <laughs> I, okay. think, I think I got lucky. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I hope I didn't offend. Who would you say is the... Cooper. Cooper, Cooper? Jefferson. Yeah. I, I didn't mean any offense, Cooper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, he just doesn't know what he's talking about. I don't, I'm new here. <laughs> oh, it was fun. It was really good. Like I, I learned a lot at Coffee Fest with you. Yeah. But this put a little bit more perspective and like, you know, intro into the culture of the poor pots the, and yeah. stuff like that and like what to look out for, which is really cool because... My mother's interested in them, so now I can bring her more information instead of bugging you. Yeah. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> no, 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 never, never a bother. 
But part of the reason for doing this video um, was I wanted to test out these DJI mics, and Griffin happened to have them because he has a really awesome adventure channel on YouTube that he's starting up. So, mm -hmm. uh, Griff, what can we expect coming up from from your channel, and what you know can people tune in for? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So my the goal of my channel is to show everyone what's out there and what they're not seeing. A lot of people live in what I like to call concrete jungles. A lot of the community, a lot of people are in metropolitan areas and yeah. they don't know what's out there. Yeah. And I want to get out there and bring that to people's uh, you know, homes and stuff like that and really, you know, show them what they're not seeing, what's out there, what can we, you know, take care of for future generations. But That's awesome. um, a lot of it's gonna be, you know, based off of, you know, off roading, mm -hmm. kayaking, camping, all that stuff, just outdoor exploration and just like really seeing. And if you guys want to check that out, the YouTube is exploration.g and the Instagram is underscore exploration.g underscore. Cool. Cool. Well thanks for joining me, Griff. Hopefully yeah, this yeah. isn't our last tea sesh and we'll see you guys next time. Not. See you guys.